Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. Now, there's certain cars that I will travel a little distance to come see, so I traveled four hours across the state to come and see this one. Randy Smalley, good to see you. Good to see you, Lou. As usual. And Randy, this is a car that even a lot of car people don't know about. So when you're driving this one, what are you driving? It's an Italian sports car called an Iso Grifo, and uh, it's very rare. It has a seven-liter engine, and they actually call it the Seven Litere. Seven Litere. It's an all-alloy body by Bertone, and uh, they were pretty famous back in the day, mostly in Europe. Not too many of them came to the U.S. When you're when you're driving in this one, do people say, "What is it? What's the reaction?" Uh, lots of this. Okay. You know, lots of uh, jaw drops. What is that? You know, well, lots of roll your window down. <laughs> It so, has air conditioning, so you have to roll your way. Now, we just got done mm -hmm. riding mm -hmm. in your 2017 Ford mm -hmm. GT, and Correct. everybody knows what that one was. Yeah. So there was a lot of thumbs up for that. Mm -hmm. Make sure you check that one on the mm -hmm. channel. But this is the one I came out here to see. Good. I'm excited about this one. So right. let me grab the camera. And why this car did you need this one? You know, it's just a very classic uh, GT car. Uh, I've kind of gotten into it. I don't want any more garage queens. I want cars I can drive. Yeah. And so I saw this one, and this is a driver. It's got an American V8 in it, a 427 Chevy, 390 horsepower, uh, five-speed um, ZF gearbox, air-conditioned. Um, it, it drives great. It's just a wonderful car. And designed by Bertone. Correct. So by the famous car Italian designers, mm -hmm. and yet a Corvette engine in it, and that's what makes these cars so unique. They wanted an Italian car with a Corvette engine so it was a little more easy to fix. Well, and, and this is a 7-liter car. They usually use 327 uh, Chevys in them. And uh, they built one of these as a, as a show car for uh, Geneva in, I believe, 1969. And it created such a uh, rampage around there that uh, they decided to build them. They didn't build that many of them, uh, but they're known for what they call a pagoda hood. It has a, they had to raise the hood about two inches to fit that big motor in there, so they just put a top on top of the hood. It's a pretty top interesting. On top of the hood. So Correct. before I even get to the main attraction, which I know you want me to do, and by the way, I will, I want to show you some details of the car from some articles. And I'll try to go slow enough so that you could see some of those because it's not perfectly clear. And you can pass this section if you don't like the details. But I thought, for those of you who do, and since we had them, and since it's such a unique car, those of you who like the details can pause on those. There's the technical data. So unique. More technical data. I'll show you one more page. The specifications and performance data. So you can see that and pause it. I'm just gonna, uh, and I will tell me what this is. That's the original license plate. The car was first sold to uh, a gentleman from Spain. I think he had some royal blood in it. I'm not completely certain, but that license plate was on the car for 40 years. For 40 years. 40 years. And here it is. And this is the car in the book, you can see the hood. I just gave you some details to read there. And you can clearly see the Pagoda hood on that little picture. Which is, this is the Pagoda hood, mm -hmm. this is the non-Pagoda hood. I want to flip one more page. You'll have to get the whole book for that, but I'll just get that caption. And let us not wait any longer. Voila. The Iso Grifo. The Isos were known by this sort of prancing cat. I'm not certain what it is on the, on the front, but that was their symbol.
It has a little flavor almost of a firebird with that look in the center of it. There's the hood that we're talking about. I'm gonna just let me take that front end in one more time. When it's a car you don't see too often, you can't see too much of it. A lot of the parts off the nose of this car were from relatively inexpensive Fiat's. That uh, bumper set up, the, the two outside pieces and the lights, that came off of a vintage car that a Fiat at the same age and they just cut it in half and made it wide. Those are Campagnola no, uh, magnesium wheels. Uh, certainly most people have never seen any rims like those. Well, let's take a look back and let you take that in. We'll show you the overall side of the car. I'll come back and feature some of these pieces. Kind of an interesting uh, history on on these cars and also uh, Lamborghinis at the time is I think maybe some people have heard of the Palace Revolt that happened at Ferrari that uh, Enzo got in a fight with all his engineers and designers and they all left and one of them was Revolta. He left and went to work for ESO and it became known as ESO Revolta so the Grifo was a later model of the ESO Revolta. And Vizzarini had a lot of uh, and put it in this car too, and I'm sure that many people know him for cars of his own name and also for his contribution to uh, Lamborghini back in the early days. No mirror on this side. Look at the wonderful grill. I was told that some of them were thought to be the seven liter, the Tata. Well, this is, this is the big engine. This is the 427. Uh, the, all the other ones were not known as seven material. These the, the, these cars are known as the seven liter. The, these are the big dogs. That's their. That's their. This is the big dog. The other ones were the three twenty sevens. Yeah, I think they did some other engines, you know, some other manufacturers. I think might have been some Hemi powered ones and stuff, but small Hemis, you know, thirty ones and things like that. And the gas, obviously, there. Amazing wheels again. Look at the exhaust sticking out the back. Let's uh, let me open up the garage just so I can show the back of the car a little cleaner. Thank you. Perfect. That's really nicely done there. And we've got the uh, the lights there, and there. We can open up the trunk. The electric there. You know, on the left you're looking at an electric antenna, but they weren't automatic. There's a little switch inside that you have to push to make the antenna go up for the radio. Okay. We'll shut that. Great script. And this side just a status cue. I that's just a balance yeah. right the other side. Great uh, handles on this one where you grab and push. Here's another little interesting tidbit. Is this the original interior in this car? Wow. And uh, you wow. realize it comes from 1970. That's pretty remarkable. That is remarkable. And if you actually sit in the car, you can still smell the leather from, from that time frame. 50 odd years ago. The car was built originally with air conditioning. The air conditioning works shockingly well for a European sports car. Oh, 
wipers. The headliner. I know there's two on the headliner here. We got two lights, one on each side. That's kind of unique to this car. And this is for the side window? Correct. Is this power window? Yes. Wow. Wow. Power windows will work without the uh, key on. Oh. Is... Look at that. So, obviously, to get in the car, you'd put the window down before you got in the car. Nice. Although, strangely, with air conditioning, you kind of need to do that. Yeah. Tabs there and the stock. I always thought that was kind of cool the little switches like this, like an airplane where you flip them on and off. Yes. That's pretty cool. Let's uh, take a look under the hood, shall we? Now you just recently purchased this car. Correct. So this is new for you. Yes. Have yeah. you driven it at all? Oh, I have driven it. You know, not not enough. But What's the reaction it. when you've driven this? Uh, everybody goes crazy. Thumbs up. You know, they they love it. They all, most of them ask, "What is that?" <laughs> because realistically, you know, most people have ever seen one. I mean, yeah. Heck, I've hardly seen one. Right. When, uh, Look at this. Nice. Really spectacular. I have, some, I have some work to do on the engine compartment, clean it up a little bit, a little toothbrush of the valve covers wouldn't be so bad cleaning it up. But I've been replacing some wiring. I just put new ignition wires on it. And, um, and there were some relays that have been replaced that were American and not Italian that I started going back and fixing. And yeah. Little things, nothing of any consequence. So well done. I was looking for like a fender tag or something. The only thing I'm seeing is that number right there. Yeah. Usually there's like a little fender tag that gives you all the details of the car. Yeah, well. It's okay. There's the, uh, like it turns on. Uh, it was like, oh, well, anyway. I'm noticing like there's a little serial number. On the valve cover. And, uh, or on the air filter, air right. cleaner. Because actually... I mean on the air cleaner. Yeah. Let's fire it up, shall we? Listen to that idle. It, it sounds so Chevy big block, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what it is. Yeah, exactly. Can you step on the brakes, please? All right, thank you. Oh, what a wonderful idle. Actually, the horn button is these tags, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's the horn. No, what I mean is the, the center horn button flashes the headlights. Look at that. You see I've that. never seen that. Yeah. And the Italian horn. That is a great horn. One more time on the horn. <laughs> Alright, we'll shut it down. Seems a little manly car for a horn that sounds like I that. Know. but. Uh, <laughs> It's got that big rumble. Hey, get out of my way. 
<laughs> well, the interesting thing is, is that uh, they didn't use a, a, you know Chevy automatics or the Chevy uh, uh, manuals. They used a five-speed ZF uh, gearbox for it. I'm not really certain why, but uh, obviously it has a higher gearing that uh, American cars didn't have. So it's supposed to go you know, like 300 kilometers an hour. So I doubt it, but that's what they that's what they say in the books. That's what they claim. That's what they claim. Yeah. That is great stuff. I don't think I want to go 300 clicks on it. Anything else I need to know about this car before we? Well, you know, again, I think I mentioned the fact that it's original interior and uh, 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 the 390 horsepower uh, Chevy motor background port. They didn't build very many Come of them. Come on back with me. Let me I just take, take some, it in while we're talking. About this is number 17, is what I've been told. Okay. And, uh, How many do they make? Um, I, I've heard that it, in, in total they built 125, but I haven't been able to document that anywhere. That's just by word of mouth. <clears throat> but it was certainly less than that or that amount. That sounds great. Well, if you have, step back, please, by the car for a moment. Mm -hmm. So if you like what you've seen, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you can see all the cars. Randy, always a treat. What a fun car to come and see. It was exactly what I was hoping for. Thanks for being on my car store. Lou, thanks for coming. Appreciate it.